This is an animation of the super heavy launch and catch that was created by my friend and colleague Seabass. The guy creates some of the most amazing animations. Please support his channel, by the way. But in 2021, he put this together. And again, an amazing animation, especially since we still didn't have the best idea as to what was going to be happening with a launch and catch. But there were also quite a number of comments saying that they couldn't wait to see this happen in 2022. Because after all, that's what Elon was telling us in 2021. Here we are three years later without a launch and catch. Although it certainly looks like that Elon wants to push forward with this, understandably so, because by his standards anyway, Starship is definitely behind schedule as far as its development is concerned and it needs to move forward. However, recent news that I received from the FAA may not be the best when it comes to this plan. First of all, let's talk about the good news. As far as the FAA is concerned, IFT-4 went well enough anyway, adhered to the flight plan sufficiently to not require any sort of investigation. There was no danger to the public, and for the most part, Starship adhered to the flight plan. I asked them, by the way, as to whether or not the booster was on fire, as I've been suspecting, and since SpaceX wouldn't uh, comment on that issue, and interestingly enough, the FAA would not comment either. But regardless, here's the problem if SpaceX wants to push forward with a booster catch right now. According to the FAA, any deviation from the current flight plan, from the flight plan that SpaceX has been executing, at least in the most recent launch, to perfection, well, if they change that, they need to apply for a different launch license with a different flight plan and approval for that may not be forthcoming, at least not that quickly. Keep in mind that in the final part of the descent, one of the engines actually failed on Super Heavy while it was trying to execute its landing burn and very probably experienced an RUD as well. You can see the debris flying past the booster there at that particular moment, and an exploding engine, fire or no fire, certainly is not the most ideal thing to have happen during a chopsticks landing attempt and so it's possible that the FAA might require an explanation as to why the engine exploded and then what SpaceX is going to do in order to make sure that that doesn't happen again more of an actual investigation if SpaceX wants to push on to the chopsticks landing now which means that the rapid launch cadence that SpaceX seems to have secured at the moment from the FAA the ability to launch launch rapidly without having to go through investigations, without having to go through any of that nonsense, well, a lot of that might end up being sabotaged. Now, of course, logic would also suggest that we have to do a chopsticks landing at some point. We cannot keep throwing away boosters. Keep in mind that during this test program, SpaceX has gone through 132 Raptor engines on the boosters alone. And Elon made a comment before this entire test process began that losing booster after booster and all the engines that go with them would not be the best thing. I don't care how how cheap everybody says the Raptor is, throwing away engines is never a good thing. And keep in mind, if we were talking about Vulcan Centaurs here, this would be enough engines to handle the booster stages of 66 Vulcan Centaurs. 66 Vulcan Centaurs could be launched into orbit with this many Raptors. When you consider that the BE-4 has similar thrust, similar capabilities, so yeah, you could quite easily swap out Raptors with BE-4s or the other way around. And yeah, 66 Vulcan Centaurs in all the payload they could carry. That's how many rockets could have been launched into orbit with this many engines. They do need to get to the chopsticks capture soon and start reusing these boosters. But 
then again on the other side of the equation now that spacex actually has made some extremely good progress with the ability to maintain a high launch cadence there's a lot of other things they need to accomplish Perhaps mastering the control of the booster for one thing. Yeah, they did a good job, but still might not be a bad thing to really get that down pat before they try to steer it back to Boca Chica and have it land in between a couple of chopsticks. And of course, you also need to make a better heat shield and have the orbiter actually survive re-entry this time intact. In my opinion, if SpaceX attempts a chopsticks capture at this early stage and it goes wrong, then they have squandered this excellent performance on IFT-4. They're going to have to do another mishap report, another investigation, and this time I really don't think the FAA is going to allow SpaceX to cut corners on the investigation. Because if we have a full-fledged booster explosion, on the pad only eight kilometers away from an inhabited area I am almost positive that the FAA is not going to allow another flight without a full investigation corrective action SpaceX will have to show that it's not going to happen again etc etc I really don't see how anyone could argue that a full-fledged booster RUD on the pad just a few kilometers away from hotels and such could present no threat whatsoever to the public. Rather, in my opinion, I think it would be best for SpaceX to master control of that booster, practice with it a couple more times, get those soft landings down perfectly without any engine RUDs this time, and once they have it mastered, then go for the chopsticks capture. Try to do it successfully on the first try without an RUD on the pad. If they could pull that off, that would improve SpaceX's launch cadence for the rest of this testing process dramatically. If they can master both the landing and the chopsticks capture on the booster, the FAA will let them fly mission after mission after mission with no potential threat to the public and no reason for further investigations. At least that's the way I see it. What do you guys think? Make sure to put your opinions in the comments. I'm sure a lot of you, as usual, anytime I do a Starship video, there's lots and lots of people getting angry with me about this. Once again, I want to emphasize that I believe SpaceX is going to get all of this right with Starship eventually, and I believe that Starship is going to fundamentally change spaceflight and the space industry forever. It just may not happen as quickly as Elon says, and as quickly as we might like it to happen. That's all. I would like to welcome our latest Patreon supporters, Brian Heyman and Warren James. In addition to that, two of my Patreon members upgraded their memberships, Caleb Ufton and MP58364. Thank you so much for your generous support. By the way, I have three exclusive Patreon videos posted now with a fourth going live this weekend. So if you'd like to take advantage of that extra content, it can cost as little as $3 a month. That's less than a caramel macchiato, guys. So if you'd like to join our Patreon community, all the details are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.